Welcome again to Midweek Prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. I am giving you worship with all my life. I am giving you obedience with all my power. I am giving you praise with all my strength. I am giving you honour with all my speech. I am giving you love with all my heart. I am giving you affection with all my sense. I am giving you my being with all my mind. I am giving you my soul, O most high and holy God. Praise to the Father. Praise to the Son. Praise to the Spirit. The three in one. And Psalm 17. Hear my just cause, O Lord, consider my complaint. Listen to my prayer which comes not from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes behold what is right. Weigh my heart, examine me by night. Refine me and you will find no impurity in me. My mouth does not trespass for earthly reward. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast in the way, ways of your commandments. My feet have not stumbled in your paths. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and listen to my words. Show me your marvellous loving kindness. O Saviour of those who take refuge at your right hand, from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Generous Lord, deliver us from all envious thoughts. And when we are tempted by the desire for wealth, let us see your face. For your abundance is enough to clothe our lack. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall be forever. Amen. And a reading from Colossians Chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. Christ is exactly like God, who cannot be seen. He is the firstborn, superior to all creation. Everything was created by him. Everything in heaven and on earth. Everything seen and unseen, including forces and powers and all rulers and authorities. All things were created by God's Son, and everything was made for him. God's Son was before all else, and by him everything is held together. He is the head of his body, which is the church. He is the very beginning, the first to be raised from death, so that he would be above all things. God himself was pleased to live fully in his Son, and God was pleased for him to make peace by sacrificing his blood on the cross so that all beings in heaven and on earth would be brought back to God. Thanks for the reading, Anne. I know you've disappeared, but uh, thank you anyway. You may have noticed that uh, the New Testament writers, as in this passage, call Jesus Christ. And I thought for many years that they were just being a bit formal and starchy, like I was called Brown when I was at secondary school. Brown, what are you doing? Brown, stop talking, those sort of things. So I wanted to put them right and use the familiar name Jesus rather than Christ. But maybe there is a good reason for using the different name. Some people maintain that when they refer to Christ, they're talking about someone a bit different. They see Christ as that part of God who existed from the beginning, through whom 
all things were created, for whom all things were created, who was revealed, yes, in the life of Jesus and seen most fully through his resurrection. So Christ humbled himself and became uh, born as a human baby, becoming the person of Jesus who lived on earth 30 odd years, who preached and healed and revealed the nature of God, who then completed his vulnerability by suffering and dying on the cross and then was revealed most fully in Christ, as Christ, in the resurrection. And so he returned to be Christ at the right hand of God. But when I first heard all that, I thought, nah, that can't be right, because I've never heard it before in all my years. <laughs> but it's growing on me. It makes more sense of things that didn't quite make sense before. How could God have created all things through Jesus? How could Jesus be before all else? And in him, all things hold together. And how could Jesus be the head of the church, where we are all part of the body? How could all this be the man from Galilee we know as Jesus? But when you see the Christ as the one who reduced himself down to God in human form as Jesus and then returned to who he was before, that, I think, makes more sense and is actually more wonderful. And so, as we heard, God was pleased for the Christ who became Jesus to make peace by sacrificing his blood on the cross so that all beings in heaven and on earth will be brought back to God. That is glorious. That is cosmic. That is a universal vision. It's bigger, really, than a few Christians finding God through Jesus in the world. Now, I know there are more of us than a few of us. Um, there are millions of, of Christians around the world, but we are still a small minority. Those of us who are signed up uh, as members of God's church in any way. It seems from this passage there's more going on, that this universal Christ has done something of universal, of cosmic significance. All beings in heaven and on earth are brought back to God through him. And so we can join in this thing which has been done by becoming vulnerable ourselves, following the vulnerability of Christ who became Jesus and died on the cross. The being who opened up to other people the love and care, the friendship and fellowship of knowing God. That is open to all. Christ Jesus has done all this and we need to respond by joining in, by accepting and acknowledging all that he has done and following in his footsteps, in his way of life. The gates have been thrown wide open. What we need to do is find the confidence to step out into this freedom. To, if you like, step out of our prison cell. A place that might feel familiar, 
feel safe even, but it's actually an absence of freedom. We need to step out uh, of all that has kept us from fullness of life in God and walk into a place of peace and love and joy and freedom, a place that is glorious. I will, if you will. Amen. Let's pray for the unity of the church in witness and proclamation of the gospel. Let, Let us, us pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord for the peace and stability of all peoples and for the leaders of the nations. Let, Let us, us pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord for places of work and education. Let, Let us, us pray, pray to, to the Lord. Lord. For a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends, and all whom we love, let, let us pray, pray to, to the Lord. Lord. For the sick and the suffering, and all who minister to their needs, let, let us pray, pray to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, 
the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you. Grant us so to know you, that we may truly love you, and so to love you, that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the prayer for this week. Oh, yeah, forgotten that. Uh, Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Christ our Redeemer bring us healing and wholeness. Amen. Amen. And thanks for joining us. <laughs>